everybody. Welcome to the house of the Lord. We're so glad that you are here today. Amen. The Lord is good, isn't he? He's good all the time. Amen. Won't you we want our ushers to come? We're going to take up our Sunday school offering today. Amen. We want to welcome all of our guests. We're glad that you are here today. Amen. Hopefully we'll have some more coming in here in a little while, but the Lord is good to us. Amen. We finished up last week uh, on a, seri a series, and we're starting a new series this week, and it's on wisdom. Amen. Uh, we were studying the, the God of deliverance. In series one and series two, we were Jesus is Lord. And last week, we finished up with your faith has made you whole. Amen. Am I loud? Amen. Loud enough? <clears throat> Amen. We, but we, your, your faith has made you whole. We're starting a new series this week uh, on choosing wisdom. And this week, we're going to talk about wisdom's worth. What is wisdom worth to us? Amen. How about we pray together? We want the Lord to have his way today. There's a lot of information in this. Amen. And we probably should have had somebody in their 80s teach this lesson. I feel uh, underqualified, if that makes sense, talking about wisdom. I've made enough mistakes in my le life that it's hard knocks camp, but... Amen. We want God to have his way and touch our hearts today. Let's pray together and ask God to have his will. God, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for meeting us here today. God, we ask, Lord, that you would reach down and touch every individual that is here today, God, that you would speak to our hearts, Lord. Let us hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our focus verse this week is in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. It says, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Our lesson text comes out of uh, 1 Corinthians and out of Proverbs, but the first few verses, I'm not going to read all of them, but Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 8, the text or the lesson is really centering on verses 5 through 26, but I want to read these verses to you. Several years ago, uh, I asked an elder, what is your favorite verse in the Bible? What is your favorite verse? And he says, I don't really have a favorite verse. It's a couple of them. And then he said, well, then there's more than that. But he said, if I had to tell anybody a rule to live by, it would be these verses here is what he told me. And I, and I didn't understand it at the time, but... Let's, let's read this right quick. In, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse, starting with verse number 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Amen. If we do that, if we follow those verses, it is going to lead us places in our walk with God that we can't figure out on our own. Amen. But we find so often in our life that we put our hands on something instead of letting God take care of it, and it makes a whole lot bigger mess in our life than what we are willing to or what we should have done. Amen. It's awful quiet, hopefully. You're th hopefully that, uh, whatever that was, quiche, egg, casserole, something other ain't going to put you to sleep. I told him I went in there. He said, you're going to have some? I said, no, I'm looking to see how exciting I have to be to keep everybody awake in Sunday school. Biscuits and gravy, you better swing from the rafters. Fruit parfait, you're okay. They're not, they're not going to sleep. <laughs> Amen. Amen, but if we trust in the Lord... With all thine heart, 
We can look back at our lives. I can look back at my life and say there are things that transpired that whenever I was going through it, I didn't understand it, but I just trusted that God was in control. And when you come out on the other side, you understand, and you can look back, and hindsight being 2020, you can see every place that God intervened. You can understand what he did. And in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And everything that you do, it if you do it as unto the Lord, amen, God's going to bless it. Amen. It'll give you strength. He's going to direct our path. But sometimes we think that we're wiser than him. We think that we know more than him. And that old song always comes to mind whenever I start doing things. Am I putting, or am I still, does he still feel the pain, you know, putting the nails back in his hand? Amen. Does he still feel that? But the truth about God is godly wisdom is the most valuable asset we could ever obtain. It's the most valuable asset that you could obtain. Amen. I've been in situations where I should have kept my mouth shut. And I've been in situations where things came out that uh, it had to be of God. Because it was the right saying or the right utterance at the right time for somebody. But when we get that wisdom of God, it tells us when to keep our mouth shut. It prompts us when to say something. You know, I've, uh, when I was a young man, I was witnessing to somebody and they were bombarding me with uh, uh, questions and scriptures that I did not even know that I knew were coming out. Because God was prompting me with what to say and what, where to go to find it or what to do, okay? Uh, so godly wisdom is a very valuable asset. I want a deeper, the truth about my life is, is I want to deepen my relationship with Jesus Christ because he's the source of all wisdom. Amen. He's the source of all wisdom. There's a lesson connection here, and I'm going to start, I'm going to read this and then some of it, but I'm going to paraphrase a lot of it for you, uh, and you'll understand why here in just a second. Amen. The connection for this lesson, it, it was kind of a day that made kids misbehave. All the pomp and circumstance signaled something out of the ordinary was it inspired, it inspired rowdiness. But all the noise that the children were making gave credence by the horns and flutes and hearts and lyrics of people from every station in life fell down before a massive gold image King Nebuchadnezzar's staff had set up. Michelle glanced over at Moriah, who looked over at Azariah. For you Sunday school people, that's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're Hebrew names. I tried to say them just a second ago. You can rewind the tape. It was almost comical how they suddenly seemed so tall, towering over the rows and rows of everybody that had folded down and bowed before the idol. And you, the humor in it quickly disappeared as a staff ran to Nebuchadnezzar and said, Look! Those three young men, those Hebrew men, boys, are not bowing down before the idol. Amen. But as they thought, as they stood there, going against reason, because it would have been common sense to not rock, rock the boat. It would have made sense to not make, a, make, a, make noise about what was going on, just to go ahead and go on with what everybody else was doing. But... They, they could remember that when they were young, whenever they were in a room, and the kingdom said just eat, they were told to eat a certain meat that was of, that was not clean, and they did not eat it. Whenever just to eat the food, like everyone else would have been of the new over, overlords, would have been just fine. It, it, they didn't want them to rock the boat. But they could remember Daniel had been there insisting on a different course to maintain that wisdom belonged to God and that his ways were best. God's ways are always best. Amen. There's times in your life you got to stand up 
for the truth. You got to stand up for what is right and wrong. Amen. Whenever it rocks the boat, whenever it's family, you got to look them in the eye and say, you can't do that. That's against the will of God. God does not desire that of you. Amen. You do it in love. Amen. I'm not talking about being mean to anybody. I'm saying you do it in love. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were not, they didn't try to fight. They weren't doing anything wrong. They didn't, they just said, I can't do that. That is not desired of God. That is not my God. I cannot bow before that graven image. Amen. But they could follow the ways of God. Amen. That resulted in an unexplained favor that was won that day. Amen. Whenever they were told to eat the meat, Daniel did not eat the meat. Amen. That was loud. Amen. Text messages about voting on Tuesday. Don't they know everybody goes to church and they're praying about it? Right now? Amen. Amen. But Daniel found favor because of what came out of that day that he did not eat of the meat of the king's table. Amen. When they saw what had happened. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into the furnace. Amen. They, passed, they pushed past the inner voice of doubt. They stood alone, although the Babylonians seemed to have the monopoly on wisdom. And the faithful Hebrews did not let their current circumstance deter them from following the wisdom and the will of God. And in doing so, they walked into the fire with the source of all wisdom. Amen. You remember the old song? I looked into the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who's the fourth man? The fourth man in the fire. That's the name of it. Ain't it, Sister Wilma? The fourth man in the fire. They went in. Whenever you go through a circumstance, amen, and God is with you, and you're doing the things of God, amen, you can go in with confidence because you have God with you. Amen. There's wisdom in that. Humanity, amen, is required to obtain wisdom. We all have all encountered and know a know-it-all. And sometimes we've been the know-it-all. Amen. Especially when we discuss a topic that we know something about. Amen. I'm not going to go, you know, I know, amen, for instance, that electricity hurts. I'm going to call an electrician like Brother Upchurch. I'm not touching that stuff. Amen. 220, knock you loose. 110, hold on and kill you. So be leaning away whenever you're touching a wire so you'll fall away from it. Amen. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. But wisdom is knowing not to put that tomato in fruit salad. Okay. Amen. We must be humble ourselves like the king of king solomon in first kings when the lord promised to give solomon whatever he asked the young king did not ask for honor or riches or for long life amen he recognized the dawning task that was ahead of him he asked for wisdom amen he asked for wisdom others would probably treat jesus or the lord like a genie in a bottle give me this and give me that Amen. But he needed wisdom. He understood what he was going into. Amen. Oftentimes in life, we, we stumble and fall because we don't stop and say, God, what do I do here? But when we talk to the Lord, amen, we can, he gives us direction. He will prompt you. That still, small voice will be so loud in your ears that you'll understand that that's where I need to go. That's what I need to do. That's the direction that the Lord is plant pushing me or telling me to go. Amen. Amen. Although, we re although he reached a pinnacle of royalty on earth, he, is re he was re renowned for his acute understanding. At some point, wisdom became theory without proper application with Solomon. Amen. He wasted some time in his life, but when he became an old man, he needed that young man, amen, to reach down and touch him, amen, 
that he would have the wisdom that God had given him. Thankfully, he wrote down a lot of the wisdom, uh, the writings and collections and proverbs from around the world that we can use today to increase our wisdom. Amen. You know, there's a lot of sayings that we have that come out of the book of Proverbs that we probably don't even realize, or you may not even realize, come out of the book of Proverbs. But what are some Proverbs that you live by that really speak to you? Now, be careful. You don't want to twist a proverb. And I'm going to give you some examples. One of my dad's favorites is, Lo, I am with you always. The fat belongeth to the Lord. Amen. And for you married individuals, he brews, meaning the man brews the coffee. Isn't it amazing how coffee always tastes better when somebody else brews it? Amen. So you just start messing it up, and they'll start brewing it all the time, and it'll taste better. Amen. But seriously, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. We have to protect ourselves. Amen. We have to protect our heart, what we put in there, what we meditate on, because of out of that is how we're going to react to the issues of life. Where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. There's safety in counsel. Amen. To go to an elder and say, I don't know where to go. I'm hearing a voice, but I don't know if it's my voice or if it's God's voice. Amen. In the multitude of counselors. In Proverbs 12, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. We've all been there. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Sometimes somebody's going to tell us something. We say, no, I don't want to do it that way. But if we hearken unto it, it ends up working out for our good. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Amen. If you are not careful and you do not hear God, that you will lead yourself because you're using man's wisdom and not God's wisdom, and it'll lead you down a path of destruction. But we want godly wisdom in our life. I don't want to die lost in this world. I want God to bless the things that I've done or that I'm doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Buy the truth and sell it not. Amen. Truth has a ring to it that whenever you hear it, you know that it's right. Also by wisdom, by instruction and understanding. It is better to dwell in the corner of a house up than, a, than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Amen. These are all proverbs that we've all lived with, that we all have heard before. Amen. That we need to apply to our life. Amen. That godly wisdom would come with those proverbs. Amen. That direction would come to our life. Looking to God and to, instead of to ourselves. Amen. In Proverbs, once again, we read in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. These verses challenge us to override our human inclination and to trust in ourself. I can do it better. I can do it this way. Amen. My wife calls it my gorilla math. I have a process. I am a list person. Amen. I am not a fly by the seat of my pants kind of guy. When I show up, I want A, B, C, and D, and we're going to do A, B, C, and D, and we may have an E as a backup, but that is a last resort, Brother Aaron. Amen. Amen. That's a last resort. But A, B, C, and D, and I'm going to do it that way. Amen. So, But sometimes God comes in in the middle of a service, and we've all been there. The keyboard hits that first note. The organ does a row, and the guitar strums, and the beat is just right. Amen. And Brother Lester takes off running, and we're all swinging from the chandeliers. And the preacher says, well, God's already been here. We're done. Amen. God comes in and messes up the routine. He messes things up sometimes for us. Amen. And so sometimes we just got to understand we got to trust in the Lord. 
we got to put our faith in him. We cannot be wise in our own eyes. Amen. The wise will double check. A carpenter says to measure twice and cut once. I'm more too often a measure once and have to cut twice on a new board. Amen. Follow the wisdom of the Lord leads to great reward. It leads to great reward. Amen. We have health when we humble ourselves to follow the will and wisdom of God. God increases us. He gives us all we need and more. All we need and more. Not necessarily what we want, but all we need and more. God will bless us spiritually, physically, emotionally, and financially. Never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Amen. When you're in the will of God, amen, and you've heard the voice of God, he takes care of us day in and day out. Amen. I've been in the will of God on situations, and let me just, amen, I want to be careful here. Amen. But have you ever come to church and everybody's swinging from the chandeliers and you're just sitting there thinking, why ain't I swinging from the chandeliers? Amen. Somebody's going to have to show the brother the Holy Ghost twirl. Where's he at? He, I, told, I said Holy Ghost twirl one day, and amen, everybody's doing the Holy Ghost twirl. Amen. That's where you dance and you spin in a circle, and the sister's letting out the wahoo back in the back corner. Amen. As the Spirit of God falls. Amen. But when you're in the will of God, Sometimes you can be in a situation where everybody else is feeling something, but God has already dealt with you about that, and you have the answer. Amen. And then there's been times where I thought I had the answer, and you get into a church service, and God just intervenes and changes your whole world. Amen. That's when God blesses us spiritually. Amen. He will change the physical circumstances around you. Amen. He will change the emotions around you. He will change your emotions. Amen. Amen. Godly wisdom if we follow after him. If we receive the blessings, we, we, if, if we are willing to receive the blessings, we must also be willing to receive the correction of the Lord. Amen. There ain't nobody likes correction. It's hard pill to swallow. Amen. When somebody comes to you and says, don't do that. Well, why not? We revert to a two-year-old. We return as a child. We become like a child to Christ. Well, why not? Well, and sometimes we say, because I said so. But, amen, there's education that comes with correction. Amen. There's love that comes with correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Amen. So whenever the Lord's stepping on your toes when the preacher's preaching, don't get mad about it. He's speaking to your soul. He's drawing you to the kingdom of God. He's drawing you to a closer relationship with him. Amen. We have, uh, it, to, remember, it takes discipline to be a disciple. It takes discipline to be a disciple. Often it is easy to go with the flow. But whenever you're disciplined and you can be a disciple of God, you can be a saint of God. He, he adjusts things for you and touches you. Amen. And it helps you. It polishes you. Pressure. He purifies you. Amen. Embracing humanity. We have to embrace humanity. Individual, the individualisms in this world we live in make it difficult to embrace humanity and to accept discipline required to be a disciple. Many should declare their pronouns. You know, we, there's a big thing about pronouns. People are confused about gender and all that in this world. But when we get down to the root of it, if we would really look at it, and the ones in this room are also guilty of it. Our pronoun should be me, myself, and I. 
admit that we are selfish and self-centered in view we all often have. This is something we all have at times in our life. Amen. There's a few of you uh, uh, Babylonians out there that have Android, but if you look around the room, how many people have an iPhone? It stands for individual phone. Amen. We're individual. We, we, we want it for ourselves. While there's nothing wrong with self-care and pursuing godly goals, we must humble ourselves to advance in the right way. In 1 Peter 5 and 6, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. God's timing, God's timing and our timing may often differ. Sometimes it ain't the same. I want God to do it now. I am the procrastinator. God, you need to do it now. Let me procrastinate and pray in the 12th hour, in the last hour that you're going to do it. Okay? But God's timing and our timing often is so different. Wisdom has rewards. Amen. Following God's wise plan for our lives will ultimately lead to reward. While we should not serve the Lord for wisdom just for the sake of rewards, we have a kind of loving Savior who desires to give us good things, including the desires of our heart. Those who follow the path of the wise will have greater chance of leading happier, healthy lives. Such rewards are naturally natural products of wisdom. Wisdom's not always led to great riches because God may choose to bless us in other ways. Some of the happiest people you'll ever meet don't have a lot of zeros behind the number in their bank account. Amen. But God chooses us to deliver us and to, to give us things in a different way. In Proverbs, he says there's a, there is treasures to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it all. A fool, some say, a fool and his money soon part. Amen. I remember as a kid that if I could just make $100 a week, I would be rich. If I could make $200 a week, I would be rich. And you attain these goals and you look back at the end of the week and say, I thought I was rich. Where did all that money go? Amen. Because more often than not, I was foolish with that money. Amen. Benefits of wisdom. When it, wisdom has the benefit of bringing peace. Amen. Solomon, his very name means shalom, which means peace. It's the Hebrew word for peace. David named his child so for, for, to have a kingdom that he would maintain peace in. Since all the wisdom passes, pass are peace, we must be wise enough to recognize that we have deviated unnecessary conflicts. Sometimes we get in conflicts that it's because we're not searching after wisdom to deal with those. When we talk about peace in Proverbs chapter 3, it's saying peace. It's Proverbs 3 and 17. It says, her ways talking from about wisdom are ways of peace, uh, pleasantness, and with her paths are peace. And all her paths are peace. Amen. Amen. Wisdom gives us peace. Amen. Because have you, have you ever done something? Well, probably Christmas morning or whenever you celebrate, you're going to be putting something together and you don't need those instructions. But about 15 minutes into that five-minute job, there's going to be no peace in your life because you got somebody over here, I want to play with that. Hurry up. Well, if, we'll, if wisdom would have said, look at the instructions first, amen, and you would have peace to get through that, amen. Solomon, amen, taxation's policy eventually led to the divide of the kingdom, amen. The word sh sh uh, shalom also means wholeness. Solomon did not fully live up to his name, 
or the plan his father had for him. Amen. There was division that happened in the kingdom. There was battles that came because he started departing from peace. Amen. Amen. I will pursue godly wisdom. During our lives, we may find ourselves on a wild goose chase, pursuing things that are not of God. Amen. Nobody raise your hands. We're all guilty. We pursued things that were not of God. Amen. We would pursue wisdom because it leads to many wonderful rewards. We have a wise Lord who is more concerned about meeting our needs than giving us gifts that might lead us astray from his plan. Amen. Those unanswered prayers. Man, I wanted a crotch rocket. That's a rice burner. So bad. Amen. I still want one, but I'd look like a elephant on a pallet riding down the road. Amen. And probably God didn't give me that because, you know, I was wise. I didn't need a helmet. You know, the problem with those in like 1.2 seconds, you're running like 150. And that oak tree will take you from 150 to zero really quick, faster than 1.2 seconds. Amen. But sometimes those unanswered prayers in our life, That thing that we wanted so bad. God, if you will do this. God, I need you to do that. God, reach down and touch this. God, do this. And sometimes there's a waiting time that that goes on. That patience, amen. (coughs) Excuse me. Patience, God's timing is not our timing. Amen. And we, we want these prayers answered. But worldly wisdom might also lead some benefits, but worldly wisdom alone will not lead to the ultimate success God has for us. And so often those things that we pray for are this flesh, what this flesh wants. The Word of God says uh, we're supposed to pattern our prayer after our Father which art in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So It's easy to just say that simple prayer, but when we're praying for something to say, God, we want your will done, that there's a lot of gravity that goes with that. There's a lot of wisdom that goes with that. There may be some hurt and some sorrow and some loss that happens in the immediate, but it works for our good. All things work for the good of them that are called. Amen. Amen. Sound wisdom is wisdom so effective that it leads to success. Godly wisdom may yield different definitions of success. Joshua found success in battle when he conquered the land of Canaan because Joshua meditated on the word of God. And this is in Joshua chapter 1 and 8. Amen. Whenever we meditate on the things of God, Whenever we look to the things of God, amen, it, it, it brings a success that I in, may not interpret it as a su- success. You say it, success. Amen. There's a lot of S's in that word. But it leads to success that necessarily that uh, we look back over our life once again, in hindsight being 2020, we see where God intervened. And that God had his perfect will and way. And luckily, we let God have his will and way. Amen. We didn't get mad and run off and quit and and leave God. We just said, God, you're in control. We lay this on the altar and God took over. Amen. Amen. True wisdom is found only in Jesus Christ. Amen. True wisdom is only found in him. Whenever we look... Amen. At the word of God, we discover true wisdom can only be found through the life and teaching of Jesus. Some have called him a wise philosopher, but we know him as so much more. Amen. Although Jesus provided many wise sayings, he led a life that defied logic and worldly wisdom. Many people found the message of Jesus to be counterintuitive. He talked about saving your life by losing it. Man's wisdom, that don't make sense. 
He talked about winning the ultimate battle through loss. Where if we let go of these worldly things, we're going to win the, the ultimate battle. Amen. Amen. His words made little sense to many of his followers. Some people left him because he was, they were hard sayings that he said. Amen. Jesus was foretelling of his death in Luke chapter 18 and verse 34, and they, stu- and they understood none of these things, and, the, and this saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. The prophets, did, the, the disciples did not understand what the Lord was talking about in the preceding verses. Whenever he was talking about his death, it was something that had not come to pass, but they understood that he had wisdom and knowledge that they did not possess. Worldly wisdom will not save us. Paul wrote, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. In 1 Corinthians 3.18. Paul understood that, you know, he acted like a fool when he pursued the early Christians and put them to death. And had lacked the wisdom that only come through an encounter with God of all wisdom. Amen. He met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Amen. Today you can meet Jesus. Amen. And it will change your trajectory in your life. It will make it different. It will give you wisdom that you did not know you had. It will give you peace that passes all understanding. But Paul understood that whenever he went down the road to Damascus and he had an encounter with God, it changed his outlook. Amen. He understood that what he had done before, he thought he was doing the things of God. He wrote to the Corinthian church in an attempt to correct their foolish behavior. In 1 Corinthians 1, 25, the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Even though God speaks to you and it seems foolish, it's wiser than you. The weakness of God is stronger than men. Even when you are feeling your biggest and baddest and most Holy Ghost filled and you can whip every devil in the house, God is still stronger than that. Amen. Whenever you feel like that you're on cloud nine, God is still above that. Amen. He's stronger than men. Amen. We must exercise great caution when we focus on worldly wisdom. To use it may seem logical and profitable. To God, though, it may seem exceedingly foolish. Amen. We all have had things that have transpired in our life that, man, that looks like the way I need to go. But whenever we hear what God has to say to us, Before we make that decision, we come to church and God, or we get into a closet of prayer and God speaks to us and it changes our trajectory. Amen. Paul ended in 1 Corinthians 1 by reminding us of a strong connection between wisdom and humanity. He warned us that no flesh should glory, no flesh should glory in the presence of God. Amen. Instead, we should be humble in the presence of God. Amen. Paul wrote, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Christ is the beginning of a better life. Amen. That better life begins with wisdom whenever we follow after the things of God. Amen. I want to deepen my relationship with Jesus Christ, the source of all wisdom. Today, Jesus, amen, is calling us to deepen our relationship with him. There's a reason that you are here today. You are not here by happenstance or chance. Amen. The reason you are here today is because God drew you here. Amen. Now, there are kids upstairs and in Sunday school rooms that would have much rather have stayed home today. Amen. There may be people in this room that may have rather stay home today, but God used somebody to get you here. He's calling you. 
Amen. And today, something can change in your life. Amen. Jesus was not only saved us from redeeming us, but he will. He is also ready to advise us as our wise counselor. Amen. Today, you can make a change where it's not all about my logic. Amen. But it's about God's logic. It's about God's wisdom. Amen. Amen. There's times, and in closing, and internalizing this message, amen, this is a, a, they don't give the names of these individuals, but there's a, a story in here that is relayed that I'm just going to say that it all applies to all of us, amen, that has lived for God for any time at all, amen, that whenever we trust in the Lord, Amen. We come to a crossroad in our life, and we stand there, and we think, man, this looks like the path. People have told me this is the path. People have said this is what I need to do, and it feels right. It pets us the right way. It don't go against our grain. Amen. But there's a still, small voice that is booming inside of our head that says, that's not the path for you. I don't want you to do that. Stand still and see that I am God. Stand still. Amen. You fought a good fight. All I want you to do right now is stand still. Stop fighting. Let me fight your battles. But one more swing of the sword and I'm going to slay this giant God. One more swing of the sword and it's all going to be all over. But God says stand still. Stand still. Don't go that path. Don't do that path. Don't, don't live that life. Don't go along that path. And then we can understand in a few years or we look back over time and, and there's somebody else that comes to us and says, this is what God has said to me or this is what I feel. Well, you got to be careful about what God says to you. You want to make sure you've heard the voice of God. But there's, I've had people come to you, or I've even myself have gone to people and say, well, this is what I feel. What do you think? Amen. And somebody may come to you or has come to you. We can think back in our life, Brother Alterman, of where God has spoke to us, and we did not take that path. And some younger saint comes up to us. Somebody new in the Lord comes up to us and says, this is what I feel. And the Lord will quicken you. Amen. And you have a testimony of how, just wait just a little bit longer. Amen. Pray about it. Fast about it. Amen. Because sometimes that devil between our ears, amen, the only way to get that devil out of there is through prayer and fasting. And there ain't none of us like to do that, but sometimes we got to conquer ourselves. Because we need to get rid of that me, myself, and I. And think about what does God want in this situation. Amen. Because God is going to give us wisdom. Amen. God will give you strength. And we want godly wisdom. We need to turn to the Lord. Amen. Let's all stand together. Amen. We want God to, to have to give us wisdom. Amen. We're going to have service here in a little bit. We're going to have an elder preaching to us. Amen. And God's going to speak to us. We need to come expecting to hear from God. We need to come expecting a move of God. Whenever we do that, it gets self out of the way. If we come dragging in here, carrying all of our luggage of what has happened, we don't get anything because we're worried about rearranging our luggage so nobody sees it. But whenever we come in here expecting God to intervene, Expecting God to reach down and touch. Expecting God. Amen. That's wisdom. He will give us wisdom to deal with that luggage and that sin that lieth at the door when we walk back out. And we walk back out and say, Satan, get thee behind me. You need to go in there and get the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Amen. Let's all pray together and ask the Lord to give us wisdom, amen, and, and increase our courage and in our faith. God, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for meeting us here today, Lord. God, we ask, Lord, that you would give us the wisdom that we need, Lord, today. God, that you would give us the wisdom for the encounters and the problems and the trials that we will face this week, Lord. God, we put our faith in you, Lord. We put our trust in you, Lord. God, that you will provide this week everything that we have need of. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for meeting us once again, God. We ask, Lord, that you would have your way in the remainder of this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Greet our guests. Greet your neighbor. Amen. We'll have a regular service here in just a little bit. God bless you.